what's happening? Um, haven't posted in a little bit because um, had a show on Friday that went after hours and um, needed to catch up on sleep and everything on Saturday. Um, but it went really, really, really awesome. Um, of course, I don't want to just spend all my time talking about how awesome the gig was or whatever, but, um, you know, you usually when you're DJing and stuff like that, usually I'd say like one out of three gigs, you're like really pumped about sort of thing. And, uh, some of the others, um, you're not going through the motions, but just the, the atmosphere or the environment is like, you're not as connected. I think that that's always going to be the case, no matter how big of a crowd you play for. Sometimes playing for a smaller crowd is going to be um, a better vibe for you and you'll feel more connected, you know. For example, I'm sure there's a lot of DJs that are bigger that play like festivals or whatever and they just don't feel connected to the crowd, you know what I mean? Um, and then they play like, uh, you know, to 150 or 200 people that are really hardcore um, into what they're doing and they feel much more connected even though it's not like this big money-making thing or whatever. So anyway, um, yeah, t both Tuesday and Friday, I played gigs that I felt really connected uh, to the crowds with. So that was really, really cool. Um, so a lot of times, like when, when I am doing shows or whatever, you know, obviously I'll stick around both before and after the shows. And um, a lot of people locally, they, they know that I, excuse me, train people on uh, music software on Ableton and music production and wrote a book. If you guys are just watching me for the first time, I'm Jason Timothy. I run musicsoftwaretraining.com. Uh, let me try to get a light on here. I know there's natural light coming in, but I still feel like this is a little dark. Yeah, maybe that's a little better. Actually, I'm gonna run over here and see. Maybe that's better, maybe it's not. But uh, yeah, so I have a lot of conversations with people like in between my sets before and after when I'm hanging around. And it, there's a lot of other DJs and, and music producers that um, are connecting with me because they know that, uh, that I've been training people and I've been producing and um, they like a lot of the stuff that I've released or what have you, you know? So, I get into a lot of really good conversations, you know, uh, this was like after hours. So, you know, I'm talking to people at like three in the morning or whatever after my set. And, uh, I thought I would like kind of share some of the things that I discussed because obviously if these people have these sort of questions or challenges, uh, you guys will very likely have something similar or maybe even the same. Right. So, that's what I think I'm going to go into today is just kind of repeating some of the things that I had talked about over the weekend with uh, some people and it seemed to be really helpful, you know, so in my pursuit of trying to be helpful to you guys, um, that's what I'm going to do today. So let's, uh, let's get into it. So for one, a lot of people when they're starting um, into music production. Um, they have these these really big ideas of, of things that they want to do, right? Um, and they want everything to be like, well, what, what happens is when you're starting, you start thinking really deep about all the details of everything, right? Um, and you get very minute, minute in, in all these different things that you want to do, all, all the, these different pieces of equipment you want to use. And you're trying to put kind of limitations on the way that you're going to produce. You know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And everything's going to be super awesome. I'm going to go way above and beyond what everyone else is doing, blah, 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 blah. Um, well... I commend anyone who has like these big ideas of what they want to do with their music. The issue with that is that you're comparing yourself and trying to exceed what 
the pros who have been doing this for a long time um, have done and are capable of doing, right? You're comparing yourself, and I think it's really good to compare yourself with uh, with your favorite artists. You know, don't don't compare yourself with the locals or whatever. You know, it's very good to like know where you want to go, but when you start making restrictions and rules, and you don't allow yourself to take those steps to get there, then you're never going to reach that that sort of level, right? Or surpass the level that you're currently at. And the reason for that is you're o overwhelming yourself with, with rules of, I need de these pieces of equipment, I need all this to work together, uh, I refuse to do this, I'm not gonna do that. Um, and everything needs to sound fucking amazing uh, or, you know, why bother, right? Well, I'm going to urge you to kind of step back, okay? If, if you're getting started in music production, all right, um, all these big, right now, they're kind of pie in the sky sort of, sort of goals, you know? And that doesn't mean that I don't think you're going to attain them. But there's a certain path that you're going to need to take to, to attain them. In most cases, when you're starting to, to produce music, there are certain aspects of making music that, that come easier to you and certain aspects of making music that are a real bitch for you. And you need to understand... Let me back up for just a second, all right? So... There's a few things that you're working against, you know, um, I mean, you're working against your own mind. And even though it's a, it's, it can be a powerful ally, it can also be a powerful enemy in the beginning. Anytime you're doing something new, your brain is a little bit of an enemy because your ego gets involved. Um, so the way it works is your brain is trying to keep everything balanced and use as little energy as possible to maintain all the things that you do throughout the day. So most of the things that your brain wants to do throughout the day are things that you've already done, things that are automatic, things that don't require a lot of thinking power. So your brain only allocates a small amount of, of resources towards thinking, right? That's why when you're doing something new, you either get distracted or exhausted or, um, when you run up against a challenge, it just seems like an impossibility to move your yourself past that, okay? And the reason is, is kind of, there's two reasons. One, you have an ego, and the whole responsible of the ego is supposedly to keep you safe. Well, the only way to keep you safe is to keep you away from doing things that are new. Um, because that's unexplored territory so that, you know, the brain or the ego part doesn't really want to, um, to move in a new direction, you know, because that moves you away from your safety. Okay. So it's always trying to get you back to wherever you are. So where you are, according to the ego or who you are, is all based on the habits of the way that you think and the way that you uh, well, the habits that you approach. So when you start to approach something new or if you start to change your, your daily habit or try to change your daily habit, your ego tells you, no, 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 that's not who we are. We're this over here and we don't want to change, right? And when you try to take on these new things, your brain will, will fight you. Right. So that, that's one aspect that you really have to understand is when you're when you're setting these high in the pie in the sky goals for your music, what you're basically doing is you're setting tons of new uh, new habits. You're not just trying to aim at one habit. It's like you want to completely engulf everything about uh, the music that you want to make. So what does that do to the ego? Well, that you're just poking tons of holes <clears throat> in in who the ego thinks it is, right? And it looks like I'm running low on battery, so hopefully we don't don't uh, die out here. I think I got 20%, so we should be fine. 
Um, so getting back to you, to this, since the brain uh, and the ego both kind of battle against you, uh, you're left with a couple choices that you need to make in order to uh, first gain an understanding of why things are so difficult when you first try to do it. And that first part is, of course, your habits. Um, when you change a habit, your, your ego tells you, hey, um, we're doing something different here. I don't like it. It's new. It's challenging me to think harder. And I, I'm trying to reserve that energy. Uh, so we don't want to do that. Um, so you, these are the things that you're battling against as a music producer, especially as a new music producer, right? So this is why when you first start doing something new, it, it doesn't feel right. It feels wrong. You're sitting, getting ready to, uh, to work on music. And your brain is telling you this doesn't feel right. This isn't what we're doing. This isn't what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and the, the positive part of all this, this challenge, it ends up being an ally. Right now it's kind of an enemy. So you have to kind of battle your brain in the beginning and, and just show up day after day. And no matter what you accomplish, you need to sit and put in the time um, of, of trying to do actual work, not, not rehearsing what you're going to do, not going into forums and videos and all these different things. What you need to do, is, you know, if you're going to be a music producer, then you need to take an idea from one location and move it a couple feet forward, right? Just 1% forward, but you have to make that forward moment, momentum, you know? And you could spend 10 or 15 minutes a day doing this. I mean, you don't have to allocate a huge amount of time. Okay, so by doing this repeatedly, you're going to run into these uh, these problems, okay? And I'm going to kind of back up and get into a big picture, but this is really important. Understanding how the brain works is so important towards whether you're going to be successful with your music production or not. You know, that's why I don't spend so much time talking about... Um, Ableton specifically or certain plugins or this or that because that is like 5% of the game. 95% of the game is it's getting your, your, your brain to work for you instead of against you. Um, I hope you guys are getting something out of this so far. You know, I hope you guys are paying attention. Um, I usually don't get like likes or loves or whatever and I don't really give a shit about all that stuff. But I like to know that you guys are, are kind of uh, engaged in what I'm talking about here. So um, what you need to do is you need to continue even when it doesn't feel right, okay? You have to sit down and take the time over and over and over. And usually uh, if you run into like a challenge with your music production, you need to kind of fight your way through that two or three times, okay? And what'll happen is something that's almost magical, right? what'll happen is that your brain will stop using the, the limited resources and your brain will start going, oh, okay, we've been here before, we've solved this problem, we know how to do this. And it kind of goes back into your long-term memory, right? And in that section, when you face that, that challenge, you can almost do it in your sleep. You can almost like just autopilot your way through that challenge that used to like completely stop you in your tracks and exhaust you when you repeat this and when you've uh, kind of moved past those challenges all of a sudden your brain goes oh so this is where we are now and now your now your ego is like we don't want to change this this is a new thing um, when you do it enough your ego starts to connect with that and now you're the person who sits down every day and works on music you know, so your ego accepts that as, as like the new thing. So it doesn't battle you there. So that's the first thing. So now when you're sitting down after, you know, a few days or maybe up to a week, now it feels natural. Now the brain's going, oh, okay, yeah, this is what we do. This is, uh, this is our, our pattern now, right? And now you don't, 
Now your ego doesn't want to break this pattern. So now you, you, you've actually got a good habit that your ego is trying to keep you in. So do you, do you get how that, that transition can be so important in learning these new things in your music production? You're going to face a challenge. It's going to exhaust your mind because honestly, your brain only gives you about an hour or two of real thinking time. And then you're done for the day. That, that's really all that you have. Okay. So, um, that's, that's the battle. That is what is so important for you to understand. And that is why you fight so much against your new habit, you know, trying to develop the habit for making music. You know, it's not a natural thing. Being creative obviously is natural, but we've kind of uh, locked ourselves out of our creativity in pursuit of just, I don't know, stability of some sort or survival. And the brain usually doesn't think it's creativity as being part of survival. So naturally, it's not going to really encourage your creativity. You have to kind of conjure that up yourself and battle the brain for a little bit. And then, then the, the brain will kind of just, you will become the boss of your brain after you repeat this action over and over. And then your brain will be a boss of you. So interestingly enough, when you don't feel like something, your brain will go, no, 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 you, you can't take the day off because this is, this is what we're doing now. You know, this is the new thing. So that, that's really important. Okay. The next aspect of that is that um, you're going to continue to face challenges, right? So once you understand that you've only got a certain amount of resources in your brain, then you have to figure out what you're, what you're good at and also what to spend your resources on. So I'll give you an example uh, for myself. Um, I'm, I've gotten pretty good at bass lines and groove, okay? Those are the things that I'm pretty good at. And the things that I'm less good at are, um, at least in electronic music, are the melodic aspects. A lot of times for me, when I get into the melodic aspects, I feel like um, the, the song starts going in a little bit of a cheesy direction. You know, it doesn't have the, the vibe that I'm going for or whatever. So in understanding that and also understanding that I'm not the greatest sound design uh, guy, I use tools to help me with that. You know, I, I've got certain rituals that I do and um, you know, I teach in, in some of my courses more in detail about this. but. Essentially, I allow a lot of pre-planned kind of planned accidents, right? So I'll set up something where all these interesting accidents are going to happen. And then I just allow the randomness to happen over a long period of time, you know, maybe like 30 minutes or something like that. And then what I'll do is I'll cut up the little parts that I didn't even notice while I was doing things, but all these little parts are these really great sounds that I would have never thought of. But now I've got, you know, some sessions, you know, you only get 10 sounds, but I mean, that, that, that's 10 sounds. Most people, what they do is they aim for one sound uh, with their music, uh, with their sound design. And they fail at that one sound, and they might have spent an hour trying to get that one sound. They fail, and then they just lost a whole hour. I prefer to record my whole process of either aiming for something or aimlessly just experimenting. And then taking those experiments and cutting out the good bits. And those sounds tend to be much more original because they weren't necessarily inspired by something that was in my head. They're much more uh, random and they're much more in the moment. So. That's how I, I can work around that without taking so many, so much of my brain resources for that. Because all I'm doing with that now is I've, I've turned work into play. I, I've, I've, I don't have a specific goal. I just allow what happens to happen, right? So that, that's kind of ways that I get these extra sound and sound design things. Um, 
And if I'm not good at, at creating certain sounds, then I have no problem like pulling in samples. I, I've got an account on uh, splice.com. It's only like eight bucks a month. And you could like, instead of having to, to grab like whole packs of sounds, you can just grab one sound from this pack and two sounds from this pack and you just search whatever you're looking for. So if I'm having a hard time with the sound, why am I gonna take all my brain resources? I, I need to, in order to create your sound, you need to figure out what you're good at and really work your time into that thing. And the things that you're not good at, it's kind of like hiring other musicians to help you put your whole idea together, right? I'm really good, if you're a bass player, you're really good at playing bass and you bring in a drummer and a guitar player and a singer or whatever to put together your song. You don't have to do it all. So why, as a music producer, are you putting so much pressure on yourself to be perfect at everything? Why not allow some of the tools that are available to you to simplify that uh, process for you so that your brain resources go into the things that you're really good at? You know, obviously what's gonna happen is the more that you make music, the better you're gonna get at these skills that you're not good at. But you should focus on one aspect at a time and slowly recognize that you've only got a certain amount of brain resources. So, you know, something that you're gonna to need to uh, understand is how to arrange a song, but that's gonna take a lot of brain resources, right? So why not borrow the arrangement from another song and then edit from there, right? Um, maybe you're not great at uh, making uh, kick drums or something like that, right? Why not borrow someone that uh, borrow the sound of someone that's fantastic at making that? You know, you pull it in, that just saved you, you know, an hour or hours of time trying to dial it in. You know, um, I think people get so hung up on having to do everything themselves. And what you're going to find, though, is that this is kind of it's kind of an amateur's mistake to try to do everything on your own. But because what you've got to understand is is the professionals are getting so much work thrown at them that they're having to, to finish far more songs than the amateur. You know, there's constantly new projects that are coming in. They've got to finish this EP for their label. They need to do these remixes. They're getting paid for these different things. So they're getting all this stuff coming in. And what they need to do is figure out how to make something of high quality, but get it done very quickly. I hope that makes sense. Amateurs, don't really put a time limit limit on themselves and they don't really get the uh the benefit of working quickly all right um and because of that they don't understand either they're first they have a bias against people who work quickly thinking well the quality must not be as good if they're finishing these songs more quickly but the truth of the matter is when you finish the song quickly you're able to kind of stay in this vibe that your mind is in for a few days. Uh, as long as you don't like, if you start a song and then come back a week later, your, your brain's in a different place. So you, you might or might not be able to connect with that idea. But if you start with an idea, you get something going, and then you come back to it the next day, your brain knows where you left off. And then you come the next day and your brain knows where you left off. And if you work through this day by day, uh, and you get a song done within a week or something, then you're able to kind of uh, capture like more of a vibe, right? Whereas if you keep on putting a song away for later, you either may not be able to connect to it or you may not even like it by the time you come back to it, right? Um, that's why I say finish songs quick, get them out there and let other people judge what is good and what's not. Your job is to be the creator. If you're, too, if you're too focused on the reaction that you're gonna get from the song, you're gonna stop making songs or you're gonna get married to one idea. And I prefer the idea of you finish a song today, you start a new song tomorrow. Don't like get hung up on that. And also you need to understand that although it is important to finish your song, have it arranged, have it sound like a song, right? You've got to know that 
you have to stop when you've hit the, the, the peak or the limit of your current abilities. Set it aside. The next song you do, you're going to face slightly different problems. And that's going to, all these things are going to accumulate. So the more songs you work on, the better you're going to get at problem solving. If, you, if you're facing a problem in one song, uh, sticking on that song and trying to kick a dead horse is only going to just make the process take longer and you're not going to get that ability to connect the dots from like several projects. Another thing to understand is even though you call a song finished, that doesn't mean that you have to share it. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to uh, sign it or what have you. It just means this is as far as I am at uh, with my skills. This, this is as far as I can go with my skill set. Set it aside, start on the next song. What's gonna happen is after you finish about 10 songs, you're gonna make some discoveries that you would have never discovered if you would have stayed on that first song. And now you've got 10 songs that, that are finished, but you learn something on this 10, 10th song that you're able to apply now to all your earlier songs. So now you've just raised the quality of all those songs. And now maybe those songs are ready for you to share or release or sign to a label and those sorts of things. So that's where the quantity of work that you do can really affect the quality. If you start with wanting quality first before quantity, you're going to get stuck because your brain is not um, experienced enough to connect all the dots to, to, to solve those problems. So I think I'm going to leave that. That's a lot to really take in. So feel free to go back and rewatch this. But uh, that is, that's my discussion for the day. If you've got any questions, of course, I uh, check out the comments uh, on the replay and all that stuff. So yeah, feel free to, to comment or whatever if you've got any questions and I'll try to help you guys through that. Uh, once again, I'm Jason, my site, musicsoftwaretraining.com. Um, we have a group, a members group that is super powerful, um, a bunch of music producers that all get together in the producer's playground where there's tons of courses, templates, community, uh, loads of tools and things, like much more than I can mention. And if you're interested in that, just go to my website, musicsoftwaretraining.com, and click on the uh, Playground tab, and it'll tell you all kinds of stuff. And you could try it out for seven days for just a dollar. Um, it is limited access. Obviously, I don't want people who their only goal is to come in and pillage everything they can and then leave. The whole goal of the producer's playground is to make you a better producer. And pillaging and downloading a bunch of stuff does not make you a better producer. It just means that you've got more stuff in a toolbox that you don't know how to use. So my goal is to have people that really want to connect with other people and connect with their own ability to make music. So uh, if you want to join that, obviously those resources open up to you and uh, it's a very cool thing. Um, that's it for today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.